Hello. Well, I've had a breakdown. Let's hope I can sort this out easily. It's a M227 WDP um, monitor and TV from LG. And they're quite useful, these, because they have a good array of connections. So we, we've been using DVI for computer use, but also it has HDMI input. And that's useful for connecting to some of my capture devices. Uh, and it's got um, uh, two SCART inputs and an aerial input. It's got optical audio out. It's got analog audio in. It's got YUV and audio in. It's got uh, RGB connector, the old monitor type connection. Uh, and it also, for some strange reason, seems to have a serial connection uh, and uh, USB as well. So it's very well equipped. Uh, let's uh, have a quick look at what's wrong with it. So I'll just power it up here on my isolation transformer. I don't know if you can hear that, it's making a noise. Sort of squeaky noise. I press the power button. Well, the input button, nothing much is happening. Let's put it out of its misery. I strongly suspect capacitor failure in the power supply. Let's uh, take it apart and have a look. The service manual for this seems particularly good except in how to take it apart. So I've taken the bottom off and I think I'll probably have to release the bezel. But it's not obvious. Oh. Could they made this any harder? Oh, I'm getting deeply fed up now. This is horrible. What is? Trying to take this monitor apart is ripping my fingers up. Well, it's probably glued. No, it's not glued. But they're just... There's unfortunately... The service manager doesn't tell you how to take it apart. But usually on LGs, I have to take the front bezel off. But it's just destroying my fingers. At last, we seem to have the bezel off, but we need to be careful because there's a cable on the front here. Actually, two cables to this PCB, so I think I need to unplug those. Right, now we have the bezel off. Right, so I think what we need to do now is turn it over and take the back off. I also need to undo these two screws here, I think, to take the back off. Okay, I'm not quite sure how these speakers are supposed to mount. We'll have to tackle them later. We need to find the power supply. It'll be in here somewhere. Okay, here's our power supply. Let's take it out. You can have the power supply out, but I'm treating it with care because the main uh, filter capacitors here could hold charge. Looking at the DC capacitors here, the ones after the transformer, they're all bulging, so they clearly have to be replaced. Let's look at the voltage across the uh, first smoothing capacitors, straight from the mains. They're already down to 16 volts, so they're not going to be too scary. All right, these capacitors on the, D the output side, uh, I've got two that are bulged. I think I'm just going to replace them all, but we will look at them on an ESR meter and see how bad they are. These three 1000 microfarad 25 volt capacitors have all been tested to be uh, as good as new, actually. These two are in parallel with each other anyway. These are the 1000 microfarad 16 volt capacitors, which have bulged. Uh, and I see there's one more capacitor under a glob of gunge here, which I'll need to uh, test in a moment. So let's just have a quick look at these uh, 1016s. I've not 
looked at them before. Let's see how they perform. Uh, that's not working at all. And neither is that. So they will certainly be the reason that it's not working. The original components are rated 105 Celsius, so are my replacements, but these are low ESR types as well. Right, here's the one that was covered in um, sealant of some sort. Right, it's supposed to be 33 microfarad 50 volt, it's measuring nicely. I don't have one to hand in 105 Celsius, so I'll have to refit that one for now. Ideally I'd have probably replaced all the capacitors on here, uh, but I don't have uh, some of these values to hand. Uh, the thing I'm wary of is that sometimes if you take capacitors off the board, the heating up of the soldering uh, can actually reform them. So they appear to be okay after you've desoldered them, but they wouldn't have been if you'd measured them in circuit. But very often you can't measure them in circuit. But uh, I'm satisfied that these are actually good, these uh, 1000s and that 33. It was just the 16 volt 1000 microfarad capacitors here that were the trouble. So they've been replaced, uh, let's reassemble it and see if it works. Just a quick test of the two main capacitors uh, straight after the rectifier. They read about 200 microfarads and they're uh, rated at 82 microfarads each, so they look fine. It's fairly rare for the first capacitors uh, straight after the rectifier to fail, but not completely unknown. I did have that happen in a printer recently. Okay, I think I've reassembled enough of it, but not put the back on yet, that I should be able to now uh, power it up and see if it works. Let's uh, power up the isolation transformer. And now switch it on there. And we have display up here. And I can select inputs. So that seems to be working. Let's uh, reassemble the rest of the cabinet. fit these two screws, they're different sizes, so a bit of care with that. Right, that's gone fairly well. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this and learned a little bit more about how to fix these sort of TVs and monitors, um, and I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now. Yeah.